The X-Men's rogues gallery is populated with characters who speak to the strengths of the franchise, characters who play into the ideas and questions the team is built around, rejection versus acceptance, coexistence versus domination, and fighting to defend a world that views you as an enemy. But sometimes those aren't the characters you need. Sometimes you need a bad guy who's just really, really good at breaking things. On those occasions, you bring the Juggernaut. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be breaking down the comic book origins of Kane Marco, aka the Juggernaut, an iconic X-Men foe who made his first appearance in 1965's Uncanny X-Men number 12. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You'd think that, like many of the X-Men's foes, the Juggernaut's powers come from genetic mutation, but you'd be wrong. Rather than a mutant, this titanic foe is actually magically empowered, drawing his powers from a demonic entity known as Sitarak. But before he was the unstoppable Juggernaut, he was something almost as scary – an abrasive family member. Born Kane Marco, the future Juggernaut had a rocky childhood to put it mildly. The son of atomic researcher Dr. Kurt Marco, young Kane lost his mother at age three. Add in an abusive father and it's no wonder that young Kane was kicked out of one boarding school after another. Eventually, Dr. Marco married Sharon Xavier, the widow of his colleague Dr. Brian Xavier, and brought Kane to live with his new family in their swanky Westchester home. This is where Kane first met a young Charles Xavier, his new stepbrother. Kane and Charles did not get along, with Kane deeply jealous of the affection his father would show towards Charles. This caused Kane to torment and abuse Charles at any opportunity, even after Sharon passed away. Tragedy would strike again when Brian was killed in a laboratory fire accidentally started by Kane. It was during this incident that Kane also learned of his stepbrother's telepathic gifts, something that drove an even deeper wedge between the two. Years later, the two found themselves serving together in the Korean War, and during a battle Kane ran off, deserting his fellow soldiers, including his stepbrother. Charles chased after Kane, who had stumbled upon a lost temple deep in the Korean jungle. It was here that Kane discovered magical crimson gem of Sitarak, a mystical gem containing the powers of the demonic being Sitarak. Sitarak was one of the Octessens, a group of eight powerful demonic beings who had long ago made a wager to find out which of them was the most powerful. They each created an artifact that would empower a human host with a portion of their powers, allowing the eight avatars to battle for supremacy. But merely moments after Cain touched the gem, becoming imbued with the power of Sidorak, the temple collapsed, burying Cain under the rubble while Cain eventually reappeared, having dug himself out of the rubble thanks to the new near-limitless strength and stamina bestowed upon him by the gem. Thanks to the Sitarak's power, the Juggernaut is a nearly unstoppable foe, one capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with not just the X-Men, but some of the heaviest hitters in the Marvel Universe. In addition to titanic levels of strength and stamina, he's also immune to psychic attacks thanks to the helmet granted to him by the gem. When the Juggernaut first appeared and attacked Xavier's school, the original X-Men were helpless to stop him. The day was only saved thanks to some help from the Human Torch, who was called in by Xavier to melt the rivets on the Juggernaut's helmet, allowing the helm to be removed and thus opening Kane up to a psychic attack. In the years since his first appearance, Kane has followed the path of many X-Men villains in joining the team as a member. It was during this time that readers got to meet a softer side of Kane when he finally reconciled with Charles. As if being possessed by one otherworldly being wasn't enough, Marco was possessed by and became the avatar of Kirth, Breaker of Stones, after he picked up a mysterious hammer that fell from the sky. He was eventually beaten by Wolverine in the ensuing conflict, which left Marco in a state of powerlessness for the first time in a long time. That is, of course, until Sitarak and his Crimson Gem reappeared in the ancient temple looking for a new juggernaut. Marco, now just a peaceful gardener who wants to be left alone, goes to the temple to destroy the gem once and for all to prevent another juggernaut from being created. 
but in the process has a run-in with Colossus and the X-Men. But while the two are tangled up in their little squabble, only to discover they're there for the same reason, the gem is taken away by Amit Abdul, the living monolith. His time as the Juggernaut was short-lived, however, as Marco strikes a deal with Sitarak to become the Juggernaut yet again in order to exact revenge on Cyclops for killing his beloved stepbrother Charles Xavier. But the unstoppable Juggernaut was stopped by Colossus, who sent him flying off a cliff. But that wouldn't be the last the X-Men would see of Kane Marco. Juggernaut, now back to his villainous ways, joined forces with his former partner in crime, Black Tom Cassidy, to menace the X-Men once again and avenge the death of Professor X. While he's since lost the powers of Sitarak, significantly reducing his abilities, the Juggernaut remains a powerhouse among powerhouses within the Marvel Universe. He's the unstoppable force and the immovable object rolled into one, and still one of the X-Men's most iconic villains. But no one says it better than the man himself. Don't you know who I am? I'm the Juggernaut, bitch! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.